You are listening now to the Spirituality Now podcast, the show that is solely focused on practical spirituality, leadership, and mindset skills with the aim and purpose of supporting you master your life. Welcome to the Spirituality Now podcast. Welcome to the Spirituality Now podcast. I am your host, Yvonne de la Flor. And if you didn't know, and I think it's appropriate for this podcast, I'm a Sagittarius with Scorpio rising and full moon. I was born in a full moon in Gemini. Not that fun, the Gemini part, for those of you who know it. I, except when, you know, it's, there's such a battle always in my mind, in decision, do I do this? And, and I just opt for decision making. But the reason I'm sharing this, that I've never shared it in the show, is because our beloved guest considers herself as a feisty Scorpio, but I just met her and her energy is incredibly loving and compassionate. Anyways, I'm going to introduce you right away to our guest. Our guest this week, her name is Susan Borel. She is a feisty Scorpio. She was even born with red hair to back it up. I love this so much. Who has navigated life by learning how to listen within to the divine urge that keeps pointing her in the direction of her life's purpose. Even when she can't see the road, she is empathic, and as a child, this made her very uncomfortable because it could feel she could feel everyone in the room and not understand why. She now realizes that empathic part of her is a gift, and it is what she uses when she works with clients to help them uncover their brilliance and inner love. Who knew, right? Uh, she loves being in conversation with people and learning what they think and feel. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I'm excited or I'm like, like, I, I, the good thing is I meditated before the show. So I think my mind is a little bit clear. All right. It's, in fact, she has a thought provoking podcast called Empowering Chat with Susan Morell. And we will make sure everyone to put all the links, her website, her podcast, so you can give it a listen and you can follow her. You can find her podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast platform, just like the Spirituality Now podcast. We're like sister podcast. The idea for her podcast came from her positive talk radio show called Living Your Inspired Life that she hosted and broadcasted in Ventura, Santa Barbara, and Los Angeles counties from 2010 to 2016. And incredible, incredibly, it's in those years in two. 2000, I think then I moved out of Santa Barbara, California. Who knew? Wow. I know. Mostly she loves supporting women in their inner growth towards finding their true empowerment. And she gets so much joy watching a woman unfold from her broken ideas of who she thinks she is and blossom into the beautiful and powerful being she was meant to be. Beloved Susan, I feel I know you. Welcome to the show. <laughs> thanks for having me. And thanks for your patience and kindness. I appreciate it. Oh my goodness. You know what? I, 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 I think the podcast has been my teacher of patience. Oh, um, that's yeah. what I'm going to say because my nature is not very patient. That's one of my, the things that I came here to learn in this incarnation on earth. But um, Susan, I'm super excited to have you. And after reading, obviously, your bio and looking at your website and all the contributions you've been doing to humanity, first of all, I got to say that we were neighbors for so many years. I lived in Santa Barbara for so many years, you know. I'm astounded because, you know, that's, that's often not the case. So I know. So it's, it's, it's interesting. You know, I used to go in 2008 a lot. I used to live very close by to the Vedanta temple in Montes Montecito, California, in, in Santa Barbara. Oh, yeah. 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 So I, I practically lived my mornings there. And on the side of the Vedanta temple, there was the school of Mr. Joseph Campbell. And I used to go study there. So it's an interesting, it's, it's lovely to find uh, someone that that used to serve in radio there. And you do have a radio show voice, by the way. I'm trying to do my best impersonation <laughs> <laughs> right now. <laughs> Just too much. But beloved Susan, welcome to the show. This is about you and about your beautiful gifts and what you contribute to humanity and to womankind. And it's amazing because we are recording the show one day after the International Women's Day celebration, right? which it should be every moment, every second. But I'm so honored to have you here. And we will start with usually how we start all the shows. It's kind of a ritual to learn a little bit about 
little Susan, that Susan that you shared in your bio with us, that you could, that she could feel the whole energy in the rooms, that she could, you know, like she was probably scared or like, what the hell is going on or the heck, <laughs> right? Yeah. But, uh, and, and trying to figure out life as a human. So introduce us to little Susan, because that's where it all begins, right? It, it really begins. The future that we're living right now began in that moment where the future was being created. So share with us a little bit, who is Susan Burrell? Uh, wow, that's an amazing uh, place to start uh, at the very beginning. It's lovely. Um, so I, I, I'm the eldest of two kids and I, and I was born with red hair and um, people, I was the only redhead in my immediate family. My uncle had some red hair and I had some cousins, but in my immediate family, I stood out. And um, I don't know if that was a good thing or not. You know, I would, I remember being very little and overhearing my mom tell somebody, uh, yeah, it, or her father's the milkman. <laughs> So is that, you know, was she happy I had red hair or was she unhappy or, you know, it's a, it was just a joke. But as a little kid, you hear that. And I, I remember, uh, so funny, being a Scorpio, uh, I remember my birthday's in November and I remember all my other friends were older than me by, you know, six months. And, and when you're a kid, that's, that's, you know, decades older. And I remember when my birthday would come around for a while, I used to think my, my folks are going to tell me I'm adopted because I really don't fit into this family. And, um, and then my birthday would come and go. They, I, they never owned up that I was adopted. Not that I really was, I wasn't adopted, but you know, as a little kid. And, um, so there was also where I was intuitive but the in my intuition, and because I stood out so much, I I didn't really fit in. And you know, like with my family of origin, I felt like I didn't fit in. Even though my parents loved me, my brother used to punch me in the arm all the time. So I guess that shows he loved me. <laughs> um, but then, as I went to school at, with this bright red hair. Um, I stood out. And so I started what I finally realized uh, a couple years ago when I was doing some very deep um, spiritual excavation within myself. I, I took like almost two years off from my business and just dove deep to really kind of comprehend who I am and why and all that. And I, what I discovered, and I think this might be true for many people, is because I stood out so much and I didn't know how to manage it, especially because I was also picking up on people's frequencies and energies and didn't ha know how to manage it, I started hiding. Mm. I started hiding in plain sight. You know, I'd be right there, but nobody would notice me. And as I got older, um, you know, like, especially like the last at 10, 20 years, you know, either people really remembered me or they, they, they didn't see me. Wow. And, I, and I didn't understand that. And I'm like, how can you not know who I am? I have bright red hair. <laughs> right. You know, you didn't, you don't remember ever meeting me. I don't understand. So it was clearly what I discovered. It was my own, um, defense mechanism maybe, or mm -hmm. security blanket to kind of keep me safe because I didn't feel safe. Um, mm -hmm. especially once I started school, it wasn't, they, it wasn't a safe place. I was bullied by, by teachers. I was bullied by kids and, you know, and as I grew up, uh, uh, I became the person who would invite the new kids in school to come and have lunch with me and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, yeah, so that's how, that was the little me. Um, and now there's the, the oh so wise woman now, right. and I can understand why I develop behaviorisms and mannerisms uh, because of that little girl just being so hurt that she wasn't accepted or seen. Wow. Wow, Susan. That's, that's really powerful. And I love that you are mentioning something that I, I haven't heard any guests in our podcast saying this, that 
Some people, you you know, you, you definitely were born to stand out. And this is the name of this podcast, you know, because I want to honor the fact, I want to celebrate it. I want, I think that that's what, that's a little bit of my little infamous cinnamon. I don't even know if that's how you say it in English, but the little mustard, little seed that I came here to deliver in this podcast to everyone is to celebrate and pay tribute to people like you uh, that are born to stand out and that challenge the status quo and that challenge the the old style behaviors and that challenge every single possible belief system in humanity. And to those, I salute. So Susan, you have my salutation. So, but I love that you said something that you you couldn't understand. And I I heard how you took responsibility, how you were not being able to be seen, even when you were with red hair. And I always wonder, I was talking to a friend that I was, you know, I, we were saying that, you know, when I was little, I discovered that some people remember my name and some people had no clue. Until this day, it's like if your frequency cannot be seen by those in another frequency. So can we expand a little bit of that? Because I know that a lot of people that hear this podcast, that listen to this podcast, they feel not seen even when they are there. They feel forgotten even when they are yelling. They feel like they no one remembers their name. And I know you took responsibility for that, but there must be a frequency equation. What do you think of that? I, I would absolutely agree with you, Yvonne, that there is a frequency equation. But the frequency is um, within us, right? You know, it's not a... An, it's within us. And, and it, well, since I was in broadcast radio, you know, it's like, what is the frequency we have to broadcast on? And in order for us to connect heart to heart with other human beings, we've got to make sure our frequency is clear, right? We talked about this. You guys were helping me with this, with my dumb microphone and everything before we started recording it. So we have to make sure the frequency is clear. And that means we have to pay attention to where our, where is that, uh, internal vibration is it is it low or is it high? And some people can't handle high frequency beings. You know whether you're in body or uh, you know out of body assisting as a spirit guide or something or an angel or something like that. Some people just can't they can't handle it because it's so, such a subtle energy frequency and um, and I do think that it's true that that that's I've learned uh, that's how I feel best connecting um, years ago it, through through my vibration and not necessarily through my mental mind, you know. So years ago, um, I was getting a master's in consciousness. If, if, yeah, how do you master consciousness? I, I think we will be here for eons trying to do that. But um, I love it. Love it. <laughs> I love yes. you're the first person to read. I'm getting a master's in consciousness. Good for you. <laughs> I'm feeling <laughs> I, like I'm a cheerleader already. It just makes me laugh. But while I was going through this program, it was a four-year accredited program, and I was studying everything, quantum physics and psychology and philosophy and all sorts of stuff. And um, my vibration and the power of my frequency kept multiplying. And consequently, I was... I was, my uh, empathic side was multiplying and, and all that. And so people that didn't know me, but were meeting me were loving being in my energy and people like um, my later to be ex-husband, it, the it, frequency was becoming so clarified and so high, he couldn't handle being in relationship with me. Um, and there's other reasons for that, that we can talk about another time. But so, uh, so frequency for individuals, I think is so important, Yvonne, because when we are aware of what we're, and Abraham Hicks talks about this all the time. What is the vibration that you're in? What, where are you, where are you on that frequency spectrum? And the more we can become aware of that and, and lift ourselves up, because again, I feel that we are all here to be self-responsible. And, and my big lesson is to learn that uh, currently, because I've got an aging father, and uh, is that I'm not responsible for him. I, I cannot fix him. I cannot help him feel good about his life. or I can't do any of that because it's up to him. 
And so all I can do is return to myself and, uh, and really try to be kind and loving and compassionate with myself, which makes it, which ensures that my frequency and my vibration um, lifts up. So I'm always reevaluating and lifting up and always reevaluating and lifting up. And so years ago when I was in this uh, master's of consciousness program, um, I was in, we did retreats as well as classes and it was some heavy duty stuff. And I was in a meditation. I heard very clearly. Um, well, also at this retreat, there were people that were, were, uh, how do I say this? Um, it felt like they were avoiding me. And, you know, it goes back to my childhood, right? Where I was being bullied or ignored. And, and what I began to recognize that, and a couple of my mentors who were teaching me pointed out, it's because my vibration had exceeded and became very powerful. And, uh, and they didn't know how to handle it. So instead they would ignore me or try and dim me or whatever. And so during this one retreat, I was in meditation. I heard very clearly, you are a conduit for spirit. I was like, okay, I don't know what that means, but sure, you know, conduit for spirit and a conduit is, um, a way that you connect and, and you have to allow flow to happen, you know, the energy to flow through you. And then uh, years later, when the lockdown happened in 2020, I guess, I was, uh, I'd just come from a big scale podcasting event and, you know, I was uh, up to my ears in, in work or perceived work, what I thought I was supposed to do. And so I sat down in meditation again and I asked, what is mine to do during this? What is mine to do? And I heard very clearly to uh, to lead light leaders, to awaken light leaders, to be the light and awaken light leaders, not just light workers, because there's many of us that do that. But we are now at the crux of time, at the crux of humanity, you know, uh, where it's important to lead with light and love and not with ego or agendas or politics. And so I began to teach uh, a light leader workshop I created. And it was fascinating how few people were drawn to it because light leader is a pretty, um, I guess, I, to me, it's less like spirit says, and now you go here and you do this. And I say, yes, I, I, I surrender and I say, yes. Sometimes I surrender kicking and screaming, but I surrender and I say yes. And so I think for some people to see themselves as a leader, A, is daunting, but then to see themselves as a leader in light, a leader of light, um, was really kind of scary for some people because also, um, well, I don't know about you, Yvonne, but when I teach and when I counsel, work with people, I require them to do to the work. So this goes yes. Down. Yes, I'm going to preach to that, preach to the choir. Yes. <laughs> I, I have actually had to fire clients because they are not, they want me to give them the magic pill. I don't got a magic it's pill. Sad. You are my, one of my favorite people so far. <laughs> but what you just said, I fire clients. Yes. It's actually, you know, I always feel that when people don't do the work and you fire a client, a student, a mentor, et cetera, it's actually the best, the most kind thing you can do for them. Because entitlement is such a spiritual disease in humanity. And if you hire a mentor, right, if you hire a mentor, a coach, et cetera, expecting them to solve your problems, right? You know, I recently went through a breakup with someone that I dated that I projected so much great things, et cetera. But this person wanted me to save him. I gave a lot of money. This was on me, not on him, right? I was like the producer, like the provider most of the times. He was zero the provider. And at the end, it was like, why didn't you believe in me? I was like, what? the heck did I just do to myself, right? So it's fired, right? It has to go away because the more we try to rescue people, the more we steal from them. And that's a sutra of Patanjali, thou shall not steal opportunities from people to grow. I got to remind you, see, I got passionate. Susan, <laughs> my Scorpio got hooked with this, but kudos to you. Yes. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, well, and I agree with you that it, I, you know, I finally learned that because I, uh, my, 
my family of origin, it was, and my grand, my ancestral lineage through the women, right, was about rescuing, right? We'll just rescue, rescue you and we'll rescue you. And we'll, you know, to where I, a couple of my mom's friends would come over and sit at the kitchen table because she, uh, they could talk to her. And so she was rescuing them all the time. So I saw that subliminally, it dropped in that that's how you have relationship with people is you rescue them. You fix them. You give them advice. You tell them what to do because that's what happened at my kitchen table uh, in my household. But that's not that's not like you just said, Yvonne. It's not to anybody's benefit. What I finally learned over the last few years is when uh, you try and rescue and and believe me, my father is my biggest teacher right now because I there is no decision or advice I can give him. Uh, that that will support him because he wants to be in charge until his ending breath. And that is the way it's supposed to be. It's not for me to, to provide or fix or do or any of that. So, um, but that was that it took me until just, you know, recently, like I said, to recognize yes. um, and those kinds of lessons of recognizing that it's not yours to do sometimes are a, a little brutal you know. Mm, yes. I know brutal, but better now than when we're dead. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't want to arrive to wherever we go next. Right. And I already had a near that experience. I was dead like 28 seconds in a car accident many years ago when I was 17, but I don't want to die again. And then being told that like, you didn't learn this lesson. You didn't learn this lesson. Go back, reincarnate 10,000 times, even though I just took a something called the Bodhisattva vows, and I'm, I will return, I will return. But I want to learn as many lessons as possible and learn from the lessons and hopefully get a little better. So let me ask you something here because I love where this is going. One of the things that you share, um, that you share in your bio, right? It's this ability to listen to the voice within. And I really feel that the voice of God is in there and that people require to listen to that divine urge. I think you called it the divine urge. And I love that you call it that, that guides you, that prompts you. And you are just sharing, right? How you follow its lead, how you follow its prompts, even though for people it's not going to make sense. It makes sense to you. So, how do you help people or how do, what do you, would you tell them uh, to listen to that voice and how can they know that that voice is that divine urge prompting them to hear this wisdom, the wisdom that light provides? Yes. I, well, um, I think it's very important as, and I work with a lot of women and I, I work with a, a lot of women who reflect my past, right? Where I felt, uh, disconnected, not worthy, um, you know, not seen, not heard, all that stuff. And so the, those kinds of clients come to me now. And, um, and the most important thing I tell them is that they have to stop trying to figure it out in their head because the, the, the mental human mind wants solutions. And we've been indoctrinated for ha ha lots of years, eons, to think in a linear form, which is more of the divine masculine, you know, let's figure out A, B, A plus B equals C and we get it done. But that's not life now. And so to drop from the head into the heart wisdom, uh, the Sophia of the heart and, uh, and listen there. And that means you've got to take time for yourself. And a lot of women don't do that, um, of meditating and journaling. Sometimes the the information comes to me through my journaling. I just ask the question, like I ask the question, what's mine to do? Or who am I now? And, you know, and, and because we're changing minute by minute. So who am I now is, a, is an awesome question to ask. Not who am I now? Cause I just turned a ripe old age, but who am I now? And, um, and so that's what I encourage my clients to do is to, to journal and to meditate so that, um, so that they can begin to feel within their heart center, within that wisdom center, where it's located and not in the head. And whenever they get stuck in the head, I just keep reminding them to drop into the heart. And in fact, uh, when I work with clients, I am intuitively led to when they're, when they're uh, what do I want to say, fussing, running their story, not really 
wanting to get to the kernel of truth, um, I will immediately drop in and we will do a guided meditation, whatever comes in through me. And almost always that guided meditation that we work together um, transforms and it shifts them and it gives them, it, it helps to open their eyes and their ears so they can hear and see from a spiritual perspective, not not a human, what's going to happen if my husband takes all the money after the divorce? You know, that's that's not a, again, that's not anything we can necessarily control or fix. We just have to be more centered within ourselves, going back to frequency and high frequency, centered within ourselves so that we can navigate whatever that next thing is, that next appearance of circumstance in our lives is going to be. So, um, so I just encourage my clients to do that. And in fact, I, um, I'm actually, Yvonne, I'm launching on Monday, uh, March 13th, uh, a meditation, a guided meditation group. I have lots of my meditations have ended up on an app called Insight Timer. And yeah, yeah we know it. We know it. We have a couple of friends actually have some things of myself in there. So you're an Insight Timer. I, I do, do want to tell people, you know, even though you're going to listen to this podcast a couple of weeks after this, you will be able to go back to Insight Timer and, and find this med- launching, uh, this meditation she's launching. So tell us a little bit about it. Well, so uh, first of all, the the I, what I'm asking people to do in joining the group is to make a six month commitment. Again, this goes back to doing the work, right? Make a six month commitment. It's it's once a month to to join uh, live on Zoom and and the people that are going to be in the group. It's not there's no crosstalk. I I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to hear stories, but I do want to hear what they want in meditation. This was inspired by a, a, a previous client of mine who came to me after the new year and said, I need. I need to have your voice in my head again. And, and I, I, I just need, I've been listening to you guided meditations on insight timer and I just need uh, something that's specific to me. And so she, that inspired me to, to say, okay, so she comes to me once a month. What do you want to have in the meditation? Oh, I want to know, I want to be grounded or I want to clear this anxiety or I want to clear. And that's all I need. So the people that join the group, you'll be, they'll be able to drop in a word. I need peace. Um, you know, I need clarity. I need, and then that, all of that will, so they're kind of co-creating the, the meditation, but all of that will get, um, formatted into, yeah. So I, I'm excited about it, but if, if people can't sign up in March, you've got until July to register and get a six month benefit. So, um, Oh, that's great. That's great. And they can find you anyways, right? So, so they you will make sure you'll give us all your links of Inside Timer, of your website, of everything, so we can share it with everyone. So I love, I love that. And I love that people get to co-create the meditation and participate in their own healing, that they, you know, become actually the healers of their own path, you know, the master of their own meditation with your guidance, with all your years of experiences. And I absolutely love that you are relentless, like one of my mentors, Mr. Tim Grover, says. And, and kind of it's a non-negotiable of like, if you don't want to do the work, we cannot work with you. And I think that's such a blessing that you deliver. So tell us a little bit, Susan, about your podcast. I love it. And I love the name and everything. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It it um, It's a you know, the next iteration of my radio show, which was live your inspired life. And, um, and, and I realized having done that for several years and just enjoyed interviewing people, I, um, that I just enjoy the conversation, you know? And so that's why I decided, okay, it's going to be chats with Susan Burrell. And then we realized we needed to have a descriptor, what kind of chats, you know, so empowering chats. And, um, and so I talked to, I, I have the best job in the world, Yvonne, as a podcaster. I love what I do. Um, oh, I love to hear that. The uh, publicists, I have publicists now that uh, send me new authors and 90% of the time these authors resonate with me or they're mm-hmm. just like 
right in that jammy, juicy place of my own personal self uh, learning and discovery. And so I get to talk to these people that have written these amazing, helpful, transformative books and, and then share it out in the world. But I also talk to, um, people that do nonprofits and I, that came out of my radio show too. I wanted, because I was really kind of local in Ventura and then beyond, I wanted, um, nonprofits to pop nonprofit uh, people uh, that who are doing good work, like um, like uh, a father uh, taught his children to recycle, and they moved that to their elementary school that needed funding. You know, so we talked about that. I had there were some kids in Santa Barbara that had started a clean water project in um, small villages in some place in Africa. I forget where now. That was a lot, but those kind of things. And then I moved to last year, I interviewed um, a woman who has, it's not a, it's not a nonprofit. It's a for-profit. It's called um, Made for Freedom, something like that. And the, it, so what that is, is it's a virtual store for products like jewelry, um, clothes, blah, blah, made by women that have gotten out of, um, trafficking, human trafficking. Um, so, you know, so that, you know, I, I just, that was so important. And I talked to a, uh, a veteran who, uh, was one of the first veterans to receive a canine companion and because he lost use of both legs. He was a, a pilot in a secret op in South America and, and was, you know, almost died like multiple times where they were trying to get him out because nobody was supposed to know. And, and so I got to talk to him and we got to talk about canine companions uh, for veterans and how it helps with their post-traumatic stress stuff. And, wow. you know, so. Um, Susan, just no, just not to interrupt you, but it's amazing that you're sharing this. We just published this week a podcast. It was a series of three podcasts with Damon D'Amato. And he, this man is incredible leader. And uh, we'll send you a link if you want to uh, yeah, yeah. the last one. And actually, I'd love to introduce him to you because he has a... He has a nonprofit organization here. He has the Healing Center in Las Vegas, and they're offering free, free, every single therapy modality, psychologically, neurofeedback, um, gut healing, uh, cold plunge therapy, breadwork therapy, chikong, tai chi, for the veterans for free. And he is working with them systemically. It's to cry. The last podcast, him and I, he was live with me in my podcast where or in the office where we record the podcast sometimes when we can do it live. And the tears were flooding from both of us. I got all the education of our veterans, what they need. And it seems to be that this is an incredible feat, you know? So yes. I just wanted to share that with you because yes, you're bringing so much in, in, um, yeah. My um, current spouse is... Um, a Navy veteran. He was in oh, for 20 salute. Years. So um, all of a sudden I moved from not knowing anybody in the military really, except wow. for my uncle who was in Vietnam to, you know, now I'm with this man and we go on reunions with his shipmates and I'm learning such a wow. new and broad, broader perspective of what um, the people that serve in the military actually undergo and do and how they're, they're some of the nicest kindest human beings I've ever met. Unbelievable. And you know what we were speaking about, we're, we're deterring it, but we'll, we'll go back to you. But what we were speaking with Damon is that he found out like there's no uh, conscious, sustainable exit strategy for them and introducing no. them to this, the normal civilian in quotes, right? Life. And right. they come with this discipline, with this camaraderie, with this loyalty, with a lot of pain, right? And so I'm so glad that you brought it here. I know I'm detouring a little bit, but it's part of your work and you are creating so many venues of support and empowerment. And this was my next question. So 
because your coaching and your mentorship, right, and your classes and your teachings are mostly for women. But are you open? And it seems to me that through your podcast and through your meditations on Inside Timer, are you open to also support men? Because you are such a strong woman. I love that you stand out. I am fascinated that you have red hair. I love it, you know. And um, and also your strength as a very strong feminine, not masculine, but very strong feminine of having very clear your non-negotiable. So is there, you know, tell tell us before we go, you know, a couple of things that you see women that you have served benefited from your work with them. And if you are open to serve men as well. I I am open to serving um, men, but again, it's, yes. it's, I, I don't, I don't play games. So, you know, I and love I love that. I've worked with a couple of men that they want to, you know, dance around me and, and it's like, you know, so, and I, you, and mostly I work for women because of having grown up at the time I did during the women's, uh, movement, the liberation movement in the United wow. States and, and watching my mother, the housewife who actually had a career until she had me, um, move into housewife and lose yourself. And wow. Um, I, wow, I just felt it to said yeah. move into housewife mode. You know, you remind me, I, I got to talk to you more outside of the podcast, but I, I had the privilege one day to film, you know, I have a brilliant futures productions company just to support the production of conscious films and documentaries. And we filmed uh, Barbara Marks Hubbard and yes. Barbara Marks Hubbard came to me, you know, she passed two years before we published our film, but she came to me and said, you know, Yvonne, I tried to do the housewife thing once. I married once. Very sweet. I did it again. Didn't work. Then I thought maybe if I'm a mother, so I have one child, two children, three, she loves them and adores them. Five. I stayed at home. I washed the clothes. I did the food. It didn't work for me. So she created this futuristic society that changed the whole view of futurism for the whole world. So you just reminded me of her. I have interviewed Barbara Marks Hubbard a few oh, times. Yeah, oh and she's, she's wonderful to talk with, or she was. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I would imagine she's still informing people from the other side. Oh, oh, absolutely. Wow. The soul. So it makes sense that you work with women and that you have this, you know, this background of your mother, of what you lived and what you witnessed. And your non-negotiables are so strong. Susan, before you know, I know I'm taking more of your time, but tell tell women, you know, and gentlemen, if you want to work with her, you know, you cannot play any games, right? That, <laughs> that's it. I, I'm, I'm not an agent here. I'm not a salesperson. Well, maybe I am. But if you want to work with Susan, you got to be, you know, you got to start for duty right here, but tell, tell, so the women, you know, what do they expect to get from working with you? And, um, how does this benefit the future of their own womanhood in this incredible human civilization? Um, those are, those are really good questions. Um, I, I gen, generally, most of my clients, um, I require them to work at least 10 sessions with me because the and the energy work that I do is so subtle and yet uh, trans it transmutes. And if you're not coming back to check in, uh, it's hard to see that it, it was a result of the work we did. So I require people at least, at least eight to 10 sessions so they can see and sustain uh, a transformation. Um, and, and basically, I mean, everybody that comes to work with me, um, feels better about themselves and eventually they don't need to come back. Do you know? And that's the biggest, um, kudo for me is, uh, you know, it's not like working with a psychiatrist who, yes, I had a client, a, a man who, um, the first session, he said, well, I've been with my psychiatrist 25 years. I said, you got to stop that. And then he, <laughs> I love you. all the, all the, th- all the labels the psychiatrist had given him. Not that there's anything wrong with psychiatrists. I have seen psychiatrists in my, in my lifetime as well and had huge benefit, but, um, there are people that use other people as crutches, you know, yes. whether and so um, we did. We did ten sessions. He started meditating. He he um, found he was out of work. He got a job. He moved. 
he was, he's happier and he doesn't have, he, you know, and I said, you don't have to come back. You, you decide. So, um, yeah. So mostly what I, my intention is to teach others what I had to learn. Yes. And that is to love yourself more than you ever have in your life. And that means learning how to respect yourself. It means jettisoning, uh, uh, people and thought forms and family of origin garbage that, um, that don't serve you. And, and often the family of origin stuff, we just never had a choice and we don't even know we're operating under those belief systems. And, um, in my personal journey over the last couple of years, when I took time off from work, I did a lot of ancestral healing on both sides. My, my, uh, mm. my mother's, the, uh, maternal side and the paternal side. And I did it specifically, Yvonne, i have been, I had done it a few times before, but I, this was an intensive for uh, several weeks and I did it specifically because my son was getting married and I did not want oh. any of the family of origin crapola to go oh. down the pipeline for the next generations. I, Amen. I, Amen. I wanted it all to stop with me. Oh. And, and, in, and so it was fascinating to do that work. I learned a lot of, about my my family and that's and- an incredible gift, an incredible legacy. One of my mentors, Mark Wallin, says, you know, it don't it doesn't start with you, right? But it can end with you. He wrote a book about that. So I love that you did that work. I love that you can teach and transfer these principles to your, you know, to the women that come to you, because women that are empowered, women that are elevated, they literally not only can change the face of their future, but also of their families and of the ones they love. And that's what makes us so powerful, right? We're not weak little victims of history. We are birthers of creation. So, wow, Susan, I would love to have time and time more and more and more because I'm, I'm, I can align with you. And I, that Scorpio energy, it's accurate and I love it, <laughs> love it, love it. So tell us, where can people find you, Susan? Where, where can they reach out? And we will make sure again, everyone, to put every information of Susan so you can reach out with to her. Thank you, Yvonne. So um, just go to Susan Burrell, B-U-R-R-E-L-L dot com. That's my website. You can you can access my podcast through there if you just want to be lazy. That's what I do instead of going to Spotify <laughs> or whatever the other ones are. Um, you can also ask, access my Insight Timer meditations because there's an icon at the bottom of every page that will take you directly to my meditations. You can see the... Um, the book I wrote, Live an Empowered Life, A 30-Day Journey. It's a workbook, everybody, but it interacts with my uh, website. So I, I, because I don't like doing stuff by myself. So the book is, is so that you feel like you're doing Beautiful. It. Um, but there, and you can see whatever else I'm up, up to, like the guided meditation group, or um, if I'm teaching a class in the future, I'm currently not teaching uh, right now and maybe not the entire year because there's, you know, my, my dad is elderly. Yes. 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 I ha- I need to be more available for him than, uh, right now. Uh, that's the priority. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to send good vibes to your dad and all obviously to you and we'll make sure everybody follows you and that they have the opportunity to join you on instant inside timer or on your website or on your social media or on your podcast and all the beautiful contributions that you are doing for our world. So beloved, empowering Susan, I'm so happy that you are standing out and I pay tribute to you. And I'm, I got to say this shame on those of you who were <laughs> offended by the standing out, but we send you our love because since Susan is standing out, that's what I pay tribute to. So beloved Susan, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you. I, I'm so sad that we didn't meet while you were in Santa Barbara, but at some point when I go to where you well, are. I go often. I go often. So I make, I'll make sure to send you an email when I go there. Oh, fabulous. And we can have, have tea or something. Tea, because I am a fish and not of tea. I, I do tea ceremony. So you just touched, you just touched, like you just trigger positively uh, my my love language. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
I love you, Susan. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your incredible wisdom. And thank you, everyone. Please share the podcast. Remember, we're a philanthropic-based podcast that is sponsored by the La Flor Teachings International that is produced by Brilliant Futures Productions. We make sure that this stays philanthropic so we don't have any commercials or anything so you can get raw, uninterrupted time with our incredible guests, teachers, leaders like Susan Borrell. And so share, share us. Um, subscribe, send us your feedback, your requests, whatever you want. And we're in all the platforms where podcasts are. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, beloved Susan. We will see you next week. Una vez más. Un besito. Adios. We hope you enjoyed this new episode. And if you did, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere where you prefer to listen to your podcast. Make sure to check the links to everything we mentioned in this episode. For more news, future or past episodes, or for any other inquiry, please visit our website at delaflorteachings.com. Once again, thank you for listening to the Spirituality Now podcast.